All right, hi everybody. Welcome to today's YouTube Live on ViewSonic Displays. I'm Brian Wise, one of your district ed tech specialists. Thank you for joining us, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching a recording of this. The purpose of today's presentation is to give you a basic introduction to some of the functionalities of the ViewSonic Display Board. And I say some of the functions because if I told you everything that this board could do, first of all, I don't even know everything this board could do because it does so much. And second of all, we would be here all night. Um, uh, so we're not going to do that. Uh, we're scheduled to go until 4.15 today. Uh, so we'll just put in the 45 minutes and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you are watching live, feel free to drop some comments in the chat. Mariana is working in the background and she's going to be able to monitor the chat. And we'll try to get to your questions before the end of the presentation. Uh, at least we'll try our best to do that. Um, so anyway, this is our ViewSonic display board. Um, and uh, first thing I want to tell you about this display board is it is very bright and very clear picture. We don't know if that's going to like translate well to YouTube necessarily. So if you notice that this is kind of fuzzy, rest assured that the picture is wonderful for your students in your classroom. We've already been piloting these devices recently in some classrooms around the district and we've had rave reviews. Uh, from the teachers who've been using them at grades, uh, you know, basically TK through 12. So uh, this is uh, a little glimpse into the future of classroom display. We're hopeful that we can kind of have a step up uh, and improve from those old fashioned projectors that I know we've all been using for the last 10 or 15 years. And uh, these are brighter, crisper, they allow interactivity, they're very durable. Um, and uh, they have 10 year warranties. So we have every confidence that these, uh, that this display is gonna work just as great 10 years from now as it is today, okay? So that's first of all. Uh, second of all, um, this is a full Windows PC. Now I'm not gonna turn it around and show you the backside, but I want you to imagine if you could, the backside of this board has a full PC with Windows 10 bolted to the back. This one's Windows 10. Those of you who are receiving ViewSonics now and in the future, they're going to come with Windows 11 installed right from the right out of the box, Windows 11. So you'll have like the brand new newest version of Windows uh, with all of its advanced capabilities built into this board. OK, so that's first of all. And that means you're going to log into this board the same way you log into any other Windows device. Okay, now I'm already logged into this one, so I can't demonstrate that process, but you could sweep, swipe up from the bottom. Uh, you could log out, do the Control-Alt-Delete thing. Do they still have Control-Alt-Delete? Is that still a way? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Do it the same way you do any kind of Windows PC. And I'll tell you a little, a little secret here. Because it's a Windows PC, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse and it'll connect. We have dongles plugged into that. And I wish you could just see the back. Just imagine, okay, use your imagination again. Imagine those little Bluetooth things plugged into the USB. And um, now Bluetooth is not gonna reach all the way across the room all the time, especially if there's other Bluetooth devices going on in the classroom that are creating some interference. So uh, you have to kind of experiment with that. But a lot of teachers have found it useful to put this keyboard and this mouse on some kind of little cart or podium. I'm using a cart today that has wheels on it, and it's just at the bottom of your picture. Um, I'm going to leave it here so it's kind of out of the way so you can see what's going on with the board. But that's a great way to use the uh, keyboard and the mouse because typing on here, not recommended, especially when you're entering passwords. So as a teacher, you got to be mindful about this. You know, back in the old days with projectors, you could whip out your keyboard on your desk and type in a password and nobody's watching what's going on. But if I go up here and I type a password up here on a keyboard with my fingers, everybody in the room is going to see me type that password. And then all the students in my room, at least the ones who are paying attention, are going to know what my <laughs> what my password is for everything uh so don't do that okay so that's what, another great reason to use the uh, wireless keyboard and make sure nobody's looking at you while you're uh, we know our students wouldn't do that on purpose uh they wouldn't try to steal our passwords on purpose but you know you just want to keep uh keep an honest student honest okay so anyway that's the on-screen keyboard and um, we're gonna go ahead and launch my view board. There's a little icon on the desktop, looks like a little yellow cloud. 
I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to start the My View Board software. We'll try that again. Oops. Oh, it's down there. It's already running. There you go. Oops. Let's try it like that. Okay. That's not working. Hmm. Interesting. What do I need to do to get this starting? Is it over here? There it is. Okay. So sorry about that. So remember, when we have tech troubles, it's an opportunity to breathe. That's what we do. Yes, we're going to breathe because this is so new that um, th there's going to be lots of opportunities to be patient and use our patience tool. But I'm sure in no time flat, you'll be totally expert at this. Uh, and uh, then you won't be able to imagine life before it, um, you know, kind of like with all the other technologies that have been added to our classrooms over the years. OK, so when you launch my view board, we're going to want to sign into this program with Google. OK, so to sign in, are we signed in already? Uh, what am I going to click on here? This little person icon. Don't know if you can see that on the YouTube, but there's a little icon down here with my avatar. I'm going to click on that. And then I can sign in with my email account. I'm going to recommend that you push the Google button to log in with your Google account. Okay. And that should log you in automatically. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to hit confirm and continue. And then I'm going to type in my should I type in mine or the EdTech one? Mine, okay. And remember what I said before, we're not gonna bring the online keyboard. We're not gonna let you guys see my password here. Very nervous typing this in. Hopefully you didn't see what I just typed. Okay, and I'm one of the lucky people in the district who has the new two-step authentication when they log into Google. So I'm gonna go over to my phone. Pardon me for just a sec while I do that. Let's see here. Okay, didn't give me the authentication. All right, so we're gonna do resend. It's like not getting the greatest signal for my cell phone in here. Hmm. Remember when the tech when the tech happens again, it's an opportunity to breathe. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you just text me the verification code? Let's try that. There it goes. Okay. So I'm going to enter this. Okay. Cool. And I'm going to hit next. Yay. Okay. Also, just a little word of warning. Sometimes the default browser might end up being Edge. I'm not a big fan of Edge. So you, one thing you may want to do with this board when you get it in your classroom is make sure you set it up so Chrome is your default browser. Um, no offense to our friends at Microsoft, but uh, you know Chrome is really what we're used to using, especially when we have all those Chrome extensions and things that we like to use here in series. So um, anyway, this is going to bring up a whiteboard, which is the My View Board app. Okay, so there are other ways that you can use this board. We're not going to go into a lot of detail today about some of those other ways, but if you have other programs that you already use, uh, like for example Jamboard or uh, something that goes with your curriculum maybe, or um, some other app that you use for drawing and projecting your screen, those things will all work on this as well. Remember, this is a full Windows PC, which means it also has a full browser, the Chrome browser. But I'm gonna demonstrate the My View Board today because that's what comes with the device itself. And so it has a lot of great capabilities that I wanna demonstrate for you today. Okay, so you guys ready to check some of this stuff out? Okay. So we're going to, first of all, show you how to draw and write on it. Um, now you can use a pen. Your view board is going to come with this little, I'm going to walk over here and show it to you. It's a little pen, a little stylus kind of device here. It has two sides to it. Okay. So I'm going to start with the pointy end, the end that looks kind of like a pencil. And I'm going to, now can you read that? You know, maybe you can't. That's really thin and it's red. Boy, that, that needs to be a little bolder. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to change colors. I'm also going to hold down for a sec. Oops, there we go. And when I hold down on this little pin icon, it calls up a little menu. There we go. And I can choose thickness. So I'm going to make it thicker and bolder, and I'm going to choose a different color. And hopefully you guys can read that. 
All right. So this is something to keep in mind. You got these students in the back of the room. You want to make sure all the students uh, can see and read what you're writing uh, or drawing uh, carefully. Now, you don't have to use the pen. OK, you can use your finger just as well. OK, and you can even use other objects that you may have lying around the classroom. Some teachers have been experimenting with things like water bottles. Um, keep the lid on. <laughs> Use the lid of the water bottle. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting water on this, so let's try an empty water bottle, ideally. Um, I also know a teacher at the high school level who has one of those yardsticks, and he basically wrapped some, uh, I think, duct tape or something else around the uh, yardstick just so it doesn't have anything that'll scratch the surface. So it's a little bit of a softer surface. And he likes to use that because then he can stand off at arm's length and not block the view from any of the seats in his classroom. So just experiment and see what works for you. But just keep in mind that you're not really stuck with just this stylus. I know some of the devices out there, like uh, old fashioned smart boards, you had to use this. You don't have to. You can use a lot of different things. Um, and in a pinch, you can even use your finger, okay? Um, also, there's a backside to this, okay? We got the pointy end that's like a pencil. We also have, if I flip that around, we've got an end that looks kind of like a boulder or like an eraser. And that is a totally different color and thickness compared to the tip, okay? So here's the tip, and here's the eraser. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but these are two different colors. The tip is making this dark blue color. The eraser is making this black color. And I can change the binding to that again over here. And I can change it to green just like that. And I could even change the boldness just like that. OK, so I have a lot of options for how to configure both ends of this. All right. My favorite thing is how do we erase? OK, now there is an eraser tool. There's a menu option down here it has a little icon. It looks like a good old fashioned rubber eraser. I could click on that and I can do some like fine erasing. You know, maybe I only want to get rid of one little thing and I want to be very precise about what I'm erasing. But this is my favorite feature. Even if you're not using that eraser icon, you can go back to the pen icon. And if I want to erase, I can just use my hand. Watch this hand. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm erasing like large sections of the board with my hand and unlike old-fashioned whiteboards i'm not getting all that like whiteboard stuff all over my hands or chalk dust anybody out there old enough to remember chalk dust i'm that old yeah sorry um okay or if i wanted to just wipe the whole board clean i could click that little eraser icon again and i can just click the trash button when i click that little trash can like that it's going to erase everything one click gone um, there is an undo feature, by the way. I do that. No, there isn't. Wasn't there an undo function? Okay, maybe. Oh, look at that. Can I bring it back? Oh, look, I can. I can undo. So it has undo and redo buttons over here on the right, and I can go back. I don't know how many times I can keep clicking this and go back through the history, but don't panic if you erase something or if you uh, want to bring something back after it's been deleted. Just use that undo button. And then conversely, there is also a redo button. So if you went a little too far with the undo button, you can go back forwards in time. OK, so totally cool system. Personally, I love it. OK, here's something else I like about this board. So let's say I have an equation here. OK. And I'm going to draw maybe a little graph, you know, I'm going to draw some, plot some points. OK, there we go. OK, now let's say I want to zoom out a little bit on this thing. The beautiful thing about this writing surface is I'm not limited by the margins of what I'm currently looking at on the screen. What do I mean? I mean, I can, whoops, that wasn't right. Drawing with my hand, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to click on the little hand icon. And I'm going to shrink it. This is very intuitive. This is just like when you're doing this on your cell phone with your uh, fingers. You pinch to make something smaller. And you can also move your fingers apart to make it bigger. Well, you can do the same thing with the board. So I can make it smaller. Oops. Back to the hand. Close that. OK, there we go. And I can also grab it. And with one finger, you guys see what I'm doing here? 
I'm not drawing, I'm actually sliding the entire canvas around. So if you're teaching, let's say a math lesson, okay, or a science lesson, or a lesson that has a lot of pictures and diagrams, and you've got too much stuff in this lesson to fit on one view at a time, you can always pinch it down, move that off to the side, enlarge again, and now we can draw something else on this space. And then later on, like maybe if you want to summarize your lesson uh, or put some closure on it, or maybe just go back and look at something already on there, you can shrink it back down, slide it back over, and there it is. This is way more intuitive and can be a lot faster than a slideshow where you're clicking forward and backward through the slides trying to find something. So I think there's a lot of elegance to this. You could put an entire lesson or even an entire series of lessons on this canvas and save it for future use. And then that way, if you like get your lesson interrupted at the end of a class period, or maybe you, let's say, have a fire drill or some other kind of disruption to the class, everything will be waiting for you when you come back. And it might even be a different day and you can just jump right back in to where you were before and uh, continue your lesson. Okay, so that's a little bit about the functionality of that. Okay, let's see, what else can we show you guys today? Hmm. Let's see, I guess I could show you a little bit more about what these buttons do. There are some other buttons at the bottom there is a text box. So I've been demonstrating like hand drawing or handwriting all of my words. But if I click on the text box, I can have a text editor and I can just type things. Okay. Quick, uh, what is it? The quick red fox. I'm having flashbacks to typing class when I was in high school. Jumped over, I don't know. I can't remember the whole thing. Okay, you guys get the idea, right? I can change the font here. I can highlight. And you know, notice I can do this with my fingers or I can do it with my keyboard and my mouse, whatever I'm comfortable with. And I said I, but you know, remember your students can do this too. Your students can step up to the board and they can be the ones interacting with it. And um, that's a real game changer, I think. Uh, really empowers your students and engages them. Might make them a little nervous and embarrass them too, but, uh, but that's what we're here to do. We're here to teach our students and give them some real world learning experiences. And this is really similar to tools that they might find in college or in the workplace. So um, that's another good reason for us to be using these. Um, and I can do things to the text. You know, I don't want to go through all the possible options, but I've got bolding and italics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I can do some color changes, make some interesting colors with my fonts, things like that. So again, you're not stuck with handwriting everything. If you want your text to look nice, or if you want to copy and paste some text, maybe you've got something you've grabbed on your clipboard from a website or from the curriculum and you just want to plop that text in there, you could just copy and paste using, you know, control C and control V uh, and do it that way. So there's some cool capabilities there with the uh, text tool. And of course, I can delete it as well. If I want, I'll just hit the backspace key. Maybe I'll highlight everything like that, and maybe I'll just hit the little X, and then it's deleted. Okay, so that's another tool that's on on the toolbar. Um, here's a little shape uh, menu. So if I want to add like a real quick circle, who's got time? Who can draw a perfect circle by hand? I know I can't. Um, so if you've got a really quick shape that you just want to add, like a triangle, look at what happens with the triangle tool. I don't know if you guys can see this on the YouTube, but as I was holding down that triangle and dragging corners around, it was telling me the measurements and the angles for the triangle I was trying to draw. So that's a really powerful feature. If you're working a story problem or you know something in geometry and you want the uh, you want your triangle to match certain parameters, you can use that. Oh, look at that! I've got a rotate tool, and when I rotate, I'm clicking and holding down with my mouse right now. I've got a little compass here that's telling me how many degrees exactly I'm rotating my shape. It's even snapping on 45 and 90 and 180. So like really like kind of like standard rotations that you might do are actually snapped. So it's real easy for you to do a rotation. So there's some pretty advanced stuff that you can do with these shape tools. Okay, so I'm going to delete that for now. 
let's see, I'm going to delete this. You know what, I'll just, let's just erase the whole thing. Remember how to do that? I just hit my trash can and we'll start over from scratch. Okay, so that was the shape tool. We've done the text tool. Um, there is a selection tool here. We didn't really show that, but that's kind of a standard selection tool that you can use to just click and drag and select certain elements if you wanted to like drag them to a new location or copy them or paste them or delete them. That's what that's for. Um, there is also an embedded browser. It looks like a little Chrome icon, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And that's going to load a web browser inside the My View board, okay? So remember, this is a Windows PC that has its own web browser, which it's Edge. You know, we don't like Edge, but you could just as easily launch Chrome that way. But within the My View board software, you have a way to launch a browser in there on your view board display, okay? And that means you could even go to YouTube, right? Will this work, Mariana, if we try this? If I go to YouTube here, can I maybe show a YouTube video while I'm in the, my view board software? Okay, and I didn't, let's see, what's it, okay, I don't wanna watch the embarrassing TikToks. That doesn't sound like uh, something my students need to watch today. Um, but what would be a good YouTube for our students to watch? You got any ideas? Hmm. I don't know. How about DNA structure? Okay, so like that's one of my favorite things to teach. Let's do a little crash course DNA structure. Okay, so I'll click on that and I'll show that. Oh, ads. Okay, we're going to do ads. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Another ad. We don't need these ads. Oh my goodness. Hopefully these ads aren't like messing up our YouTube live. You know, is that like, are we like, okay. It's okay. This wasn't monetized anyway, but anyway, there's my video. All right. That's, that's mesmerizing. There we go. That's, that's, is there a way we can like get rid of those ads? Yeah, how can we do that? Let's see. Magic box. Down there. Magic box. That's this one. So you saw that before when I launched this YouTube video, I was using the little web browser button that looks kind of like the Chrome icon. Let's try this magic box. It literally looks like a little cardboard box. I'm going to click on that one this time. And look at that. This is a little bit different than the embedded web browser. Okay. I'm going to click the YouTube button right here at the top of the uh, magic box little red YouTube button. And look, it's not searching the internet now. It's already searching YouTube videos. Okay, so I'm going to type crash course biology DNA structure. Shout out to crash course, by the way, if you teach secondary science uh, or maybe even some other subject areas, but science is really their specialty. This is a great series of videos. Um, I use them, used to use them all the time when I taught in the classroom. So uh, I'm going to click there and look. Um, wait, wait, there's no ads. Oh my goodness, it just started the video. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. So I click on that and right away my students are getting some knowledge, some YouTube magic happening in my classroom, and they didn't have to watch those irritating advertisements. So highly recommend that if you want to show a YouTube video. Um, you know, your PC that's hooked up to the old fashioned projector probably doesn't have something like this. So um, this is another great reason to have these displays in your classroom because that YouTube button, magic button alone in the magic box, uh, that's, that, that would do it for me. That would be enough uh, for me uh, to, to want to make the switch, okay? Um, there's other buttons up here. I don't have time to show you all of those today, but um, rest assured, this magic box does lots of other really cool things too, uh, not just scrubbing uh, commercials from your YouTubes, okay? So I'm gonna close that. Uh, let's see, what should we show them next? Um, there is a, uh, another folder icon here. And I don't know, to be honest, what all these things do. I see a printer button. Maybe I can print the canvas on my classroom printer. Who knows? Try it out, let us know. Uh, how you how it works for you. Oh, what if I want to share my whiteboard session? Okay, now what does this mean? This means you can actually take what's going on here on the screen and you can push it out to your students' devices. Okay, now 
This is a little more advanced. To be honest, a lot of us haven't done this yet. I'm going to click yes and just see what happens. So it's going to, oh, it says it failed to share using the QR code. All right, well, what? You can probably create like a yeah. background, like a timer. Yeah. Everything's on there that you want to save mm -hmm. um, and be able to load every time whenever you yeah. have a new session. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear what Mariana is saying, but you might want to, you might need to create, you might want to create a link to a background or something that you could save. That, that you could save. Yeah, you can save your canvas. Okay. Okay, well, let's, let's demonstrate that. Um, where are those templates? There's a little icon down here that looks kind of like an old fashioned, old fashioned shutter, or is it one of these down here? Oh, this guy. Okay, so it's down in the extreme lower left corner. Sorry, I'm out of the frame there. Extreme lower left corner of the board. There's a little tiny icon with a couple of little gray mountains on it. You probably can't see this on YouTube, but I'm going to click on that. And now I have a whole menu of background options. So, um, you know, like I'm going to choose to apply that background right there. And now, let's see, now what's going to happen? I go like that. Guess what? If I'm a coach, there you go. Now I can start diagramming a football play. Okay. And I can do that. And I can do that, that old John Madden thing, you know, boom, you know, and then we can talk about uh, all the great plays that are happening. Um, and if you noticed, uh, there were quite a few uh, sports options here. There was a baseball diamond, basketball court, um, soccer field, soccer pitch, sorry, football pitch. Let's call it what it's supposed to be called. Um, so that might be a great option for those of you who are athletically inclined. Maybe you want to use this as a way to get your students engaged for that, you know, those inevitable times when they have to do some chalk talk uh, instead of going out on the field for practice. So, but look, just take a look at some of these other options. If you're a music teacher, you've got some, um, oh boy, what are these called? Uh, treble clefs and some staffs so you could hand draw some notes. Uh, that's real promising. Um, we've got some interesting comic book style backgrounds. We've got the parquet flooring. Uh, that, that's, uh, are you guys old enough to remember that? Boston Celtics? I don't know. I'm old. Okay. Um, we've got a map of the world which you can zoom in and out of, and you can kind of choose whether you want the one that's color coded by, um, yeah, color coded by continent or black and white. And then look at this, we've got some graphic organizers. We've got some flow charts. We've got some um, boxes and arrows and things like that going on. Meeting minutes. Oh my goodness. Um, graph paper. These look kind of like chalkboards. Um, and I know for those of us maybe who teach elementary, uh, let's see. I'm going to really go outside of my comfort zone here. Let's pretend that we're a elementary teacher teaching everybody how to write their name. I'm sure there's a word for these kind of things, you know. I don't know. Um, Emily does that a lot better because she taught elementary and, and, and maybe Mariana would do that better too. But you guys get the idea. There's a lot of backgrounds here that you can use for all of your different types of lessons. I'll just scroll through. And uh, we also got some note card templates. Uh, yeah. So again, lots of possibilities there. OK. If you wanted to like add the, your background color, mm -hmm. so maybe you want to change down there on the palette. Oh, yeah. You can change the background color. And then you just keep on well, I'm going for, we'll go for purple, obviously. There you go. And then now you Sacramento want to Kings purple. There you go. And then you wanted to be able to add a timer, maybe through the magic mm -hmm. toolbox. There's Mm -hmm. there's timers in the magic toolbox down there. Timers in the magic toolbox. Ooh, how do I add a timer? So remember the magic box down there? Yes, yeah. the magic box. Okay. There should be somewhere in there where you can add a timer. Okay. Maybe. Hmm. I see a post it note. I see kind of, ooh, whoops, my, my elbow. Elbow touched the screen. Uh oh. Okay. Watch out for that, everybody. Watch out for that. Okay. Uh, what is this? My view board throw. Okay, we're not going to demonstrate this today, but I just want to make you guys aware that your students can throw things onto the board. I don't mean throw a paper airplane. What I mean is they can have a picture on their device, and maybe it's a picture of the work that they've done, or maybe it's a picture that they found on the internet, and you have decided, okay, you probably need to look at this and make sure it's appropriate to share with the class, 
but real easy for them to throw it onto the board. So we're not going to demonstrate that today. That's something you can look up or uh, call in your site ed tech for some support, and uh, we'll figure out how to show you how to do that. But um, that's something your students can do. They can just throw an image up on the board, and you can actually have multiple students sharing their images at the same time. So like, for example, you're doing a number talk maybe. You want everybody to look at um, how different people in the room solved the same problem or how they visualized a certain number or a certain math function. Um, yeah, you can put all that on there and compare them side by side. So that's a great one. So we're still looking for the timer option. Okay. Um, this one has a question and answer. So you can actually do live questions, live Q&A, and live like kind of a check for understanding. That's a little more advanced also. That wasn't what we were looking for. So I'm going to go over here and close that. OK. What else is in this magic box? What's this thing with all the stars? Oh, that was the question. Whoops. That was the same thing everybody already saw. Just wanted to show it to you twice. It was so cool, I wanted to show it to you twice. OK. Um, how about this search images? Uh, what's this? Um, oh, look at that. You can have several question types, multiple choice, true or false, rating, free format, voting, or random drawing. You want to do like a random selection of your students, or you want to do a vote, you can do a class poll. Uh, all those options are here at a fingertip. So I know a lot of us use Pear Deck uh, for those kinds of interactive questions. Well, guess what? You can also use your view board to do that, um, and your students would just need to log into the session. So again, totally advanced stuff. Um, yeah. You know, in show them is on um, the go back to the view what get the on there we the go. upper right hand corner. Sorry, I accidentally quit the view board, so we're gonna have to stall for a few seconds while we reload it. There we go. Okay. On the upper right hand corner, the gear up there. If you click on the gear. Okay, we'll click on the gear in the upper right hand corner. There's a little question mark there. Okay. Little question mark, little little purple question question mark, mark. purple question yeah. mark right there. You guys see this? Click on the question mark. Whoops. No, I don't need to update today. And then there's lots oh, of look at that. There's tutorials. Oh, thank goodness. Yes, this is probably what I need. Clearly, I need more practice with these view boards. And I'm sure, you, I'm sure pretty much everybody else does too. So again, how did we get there? We clicked on the little gear in the upper right corner of the My View Board screen. And then we clicked on the little purple question mark. And now we have tutorials, basic, yes, basic so tutorials which some of which we already covered here, right? Um, like the pen tools and the selections, but there's other things here as well. And you just click on that and you can read all about it. Okay, and there's even little videos for you. Okay, cool. All right, what else do we wanna show everybody? We still got some time left. Uh, let's see. Oh. Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that. I also wanted to show you. Uh, this is one of my favorite features. Okay, remember, this is not just a tool for you to be using as a teacher projecting your lesson. I know that's how a lot of us imagine our classroom display, but please, when you get this device in your classroom, please think about ways your students can be interacting with it. I already mentioned that they can step up to the board, they can have the pen, they can use their finger, they can use the keyboard and the mouse. You know, yeah, they can do all that. But what if you had more than one student come up at the same time, huh? Look at this. So I'm gonna click on this little button down here in the bottom left. Uh, it had a couple of little pictures of stick figure people. Now this is gonna take a few seconds to load, but when it loads, it's gonna be awesome. All right. How long does this usually take? Like maybe 10 seconds? There it goes, okay. So what it does is it divides your board up into several zones. Each zone is independent of the others. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean, you can have three different students up here side by side, or maybe two students up here side by side, or four students up here. Oh, wait a minute, you got to stack them on top of each other. That's a little trickier. And then you can even go all the way to six. You know, I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, unless you've got students that are very stackable, you know, maybe you could like have somebody sit on somebody else's shoulder. No, I don't recommend that. Um, so I think the real reason that they have six is in some districts, in some parts of the world, they have special mounts for these 
that allow the screen to tilt and you can tilt at 90 degrees like the whole screen is a table and you can have six students around the table uh, solving the problem horizontally. Um, that's probably not what we're going to do here in series. We don't have that kind of mount. Um, but so probably three, I think, is the most that I would use at the same time. But here's what it does, okay? Look at this. If student A is drawing right here and student B is drawing right here and student C is drawing right here, they can actually be drawing at the same time like that. And if I try to go over here and let's say my finger strays a little bit and I try to encroach on my neighbors, oh, nope, not working. See, it won't let me do that. It won't let me continue once I've crossed the line. Now, I can take my finger, pick it up, put it on this side, but see, then it would be a little more obvious that I'm kind of like elbowing into my neighbor's uh, part of the screen. So um, this is a really elegant way to have multiple students solving a problem at the same time. Each one of these three zones has its own independent color controls and its own independent eraser, and yes, a garbage can so you can, uh, or the student can erase uh, all their work and just start over from scratch if they choose, okay? I don't see an undo button, so they don't have everything, okay? They don't have all the capabilities, um, but again, they can use their finger, they can use this, they can use the water bottle, they can do the hand erasing, maybe. It doesn't work as well, okay? We're finding that the erase, the hand erase doesn't work so well when you're in this student split screen mode. There is an erase tool that I can use, and then I just kind of have to drag it around a whole bunch. So, you know, you can experiment with that a little bit, but I think this is a great way to engage your students, um, give them a problem, all three of them solve it side by side. If you want to turn that into a game or a competition of some kind, uh, you know, the sky's the limit here. And uh, then when you're done and you just want to go back into the regular way uh, of using the whiteboard, you just click the close button and then you're right back in the normal My View board uh, and you can continue on with the lesson. So that doesn't delete the lesson. It doesn't like erase what's already on the screen. It's, it's still stored uh, in memory back there. Okay, so I wanted to make sure we saw that. And then we want to show, oh, the magic box. Something else we want to show you in the magic box. Okay, third icon. So I see a, it's an icon that has a ruler and a triangle and a pencil. I'm going to click on that baby and look at this. We've got some automatic drawing tools and uh, other stuff that looks pretty exciting. Hey, what about an XY coordinate plane? Let's see. Can I click and drag this onto my screen? Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just like that. I have a Cartesian coordinate plane with X and Y labeled axes ready to go. And when, when I click my finger on it, it's already trying to draw a line for me. And then I can put this line exactly where I want. I can add other lines. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for showing us that, Mariana. Great idea. I'm glad she's around for this stuff. Um, okay. So I, honestly, folks, I would be lost without Mariana. She's amazing. Um, okay, so I'm going to click on that again. Let's try another one. Let's try, oh, how about a little class randomization, huh? You want to roll the dice? Maybe this is how you do a random selection, or maybe you just want to have a little fun in the class and say, hey, let's see, let's see what we do here. Okay, we have choice number six, or choice number six again, or choice number what? That's highly improbable. I got three sixes in a row. I guess I should go to Las Vegas. Just kidding. Don't do that. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're not gonna talk about gambling. All right. So um, I can do one of those, or ta-da! I just got an idea. Let's have two of them. Right. If one is good, two is even better. So I know this is a random selection method that a lot of folks use in our district. One die is the row, the other die is the column, and this is a quick way to select a random student, a uh, random seat. Okay, so maybe this is row two, column six, something like that. Now you've just randomly selected a seat in your class and you've just called on a student and now they get to give an answer. And then you're gonna go do that again. And remember these float above the drawing that you have on your view board. So you can put these, tuck these away over in a corner and in the meantime, you've got your math problem or your text that you're annotating or your question or whatever, and you just walk over here every time you want to do a random selection. So that's a nice way to 
kind of handle random selections. I know we always used to use the old fashioned uh, uh, popsicle sticks, and that's just a way to maybe do it in a little bit of a different way. I like to mix it up, have some variety in your class. Okay. So what other magic tools have we got? Ooh, what is this? This looks like a timer. What is that? Look at that, we have a timer. So if you are gonna give your students, let's say some independent work to work on in the class and you wanna give them, I don't know, pick a time, 10 minutes or, oh, look at that. We can adjust it with these little red buttons. Three minutes, okay, push the play button. And now I've got a three minute countdown timer, which is clickable and draggable, I think. Is it or is it? I don't know. I can, seems like I can scale it. Oh, there we go. I have to click and drag it on the actual part of the clock that has the numbers. So again, I can put that in the corner. I've still got the rest of my screen so I can show whatever I wanna show them while they're doing their independent work but I've got a countdown timer. And then even while it's running, I can hit the stop button and I can make some little adjustments if I need to. There's even a choice whether or not you wanna to listen to the sound. Do you know what this thing does when it hits zero? Does it do anything interesting? Like what kind of noise does it play? I'm wondering, what do you think? Let's put it down to like, let's put it down to like three seconds. I don't even know if the sound is turned on on this thing. Three, two, one. Oh, there you go. Sounds like an alarm clock. Okay, there you go. Or a kitchen timer. All right, the pizza's done. The pizza's done. It's dinner time. Just kidding. Okay, 4.15. We have about a couple of minutes left. Mariana, is there anything in the chat for us to talk about with anybody? Nobody. Everybody's being shy. Come on, folks. Put something in the chat. Um, okay, and there's also a stopwatch. I didn't mention that before, but if you wanted to count up, for some reason, I don't know why, maybe you're doing a science lesson, you wanna see how long it takes for something to happen, you've got a stopwatch and you can count up as well. So again, that's another great thing to use in the magic box. Again, all these things are just in that one little icon, okay? Just that one little part of the magic box has all these things. You can see we've got rulers, we've got protractors, we've got calculator. Ooh, I'm intrigued. What can I do with this calculator? Look at that. I've got a four function calculator with square roots, percentages, square reciprocals. Looks like it has some undo capability and some clearing buttons. So, and positive negative. So, you know, you're not gonna do like AP calculus with this calculator, but you can do some simple math um, with, uh, with the basic four functions plus a little bit of algebraic stuff, okay? And again, just like all these other magic tools, I can't emphasize this enough, you can drag it around, it's floating above your canvas. And uh, you know, as you scale your canvas and show other parts of your lesson, that calculator is floating in front where it needs to be. Okay, anything else I should show in the final minutes that we have left? Any ideas? Toggling from the windows. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say, you know, let's say for whatever reason, I need to put my view board lesson on hold and I want to go like go back to the regular Windows computer world uh, to that desktop environment. There's a little button right here that looks like Windows. Guess what happens when I push it? I'm back in Windows with the push of a button. OK, and so this is great. Like if I have a Microsoft Word document or a PDF or something with my curriculum, anything, anything I want to show the, uh, the class that's on my desktop, it's back here. I could use my native browser if I wanted to. And then when I want to go back to that view board, it's waiting for me. I just have to click that button and then it sends me right back where I was. And I have all the tools there. Okay, let's go back and look at those tools again. I've got the same tools that I had before. I've got some screen capture and screen record capabilities. We didn't even have time to show everybody how to do that. But yes, you can take screenshots and you can record what's happening on this, uh, do a screen recording. So think about all this, all the interactivity that's possible with that. And you've also got, um, I don't know, I don't know. We're running out of time though. I can't really show you guys too much else because our time has uh, come to an end. But again, I hope you guys have gotten just a few ideas, maybe whet your appetite. Please remember that there's a lot more that this board can do 
don't be overwhelmed. Pick one or two functions that you think you can do well that are really going to help your class. Use them judiciously. Make sure you use those features well. You can always learn more features and more functions later, okay? We don't want you guys to get overwhelmed. We know teachers have enough to think about uh, in their in their in their day to day jobs. So um, reach out if you have questions. Your site ed techs are happy to help. We are also happy to help you and support you. Um, and uh, we just hope that this tool will help improve student learning in your classroom. So for now, we'll sign off. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye, everybody.